in the capital city. Uh, she was a postdoctoral student doing just research, a biology uh, uh, research, but, uh, you know, uh, protesters attacked uh, the, the vehicle that, that uh, foreigners were in, and she uh, uh, died uh, because of injuries she incurred of uh, a rock attack. And so, um, you know, it's, it, these protests are continuing, um, and so it's very worrisome and tense environment uh, as we speak in Ethiopia right now. Yeah, I, c I can imagine, uh, Salem, but what do other foreigners, apart from the uh, American citizens who I'm sure already have sent out uh, a message to citizens there, what do they make of the protests? And have there also been warnings against travel to Ethiopia or in staying in the country? Yes, um, you know, warnings have been uh, issued. Uh, State Department uh, uh, issued a warning uh, just uh, earlier this year when the protests uh, which started, uh, organized protests that started in November 2015, uh, resurfaced again in August. Uh, and so uh, most, uh, you know, embassies have been uh, issuing statements saying, uh, you know, advising their citizens to stay away from these places where uh, where there are, uh, you know, organized protests. But, you know, in other places in the capital city, life goes on, daily life uh, goes on. But in places where uh, these protests are, are highly um, documented, meaning in the Oromia region and Amhara region and places where uh, outside the capital city, uh, a lot of embassies are warning their citizens to stay away from environments that uh, can be uh, dangerous. Salem, are Ethiopians worried that these protests could uh, turn more violent and result in something never more serious, especially if the government tries to clamp down on the protesters? Yeah, uh, I think Ethiopians are uh, really worried because this has been continuing uh, for the majority of the past year. Uh, in fact, uh, we are seeing also stifling of the press uh, just on October, right before this cultural, yeah. uh, ethnic cultural uh, event that took place on Sunday, uh, they started arresting journalists. Ethiopia is not, uh, you know, Ethiopia, Ethiopian government has been cracking down on uh, the press uh, for a very long time. It's one of the, the top jailers in the world of, of, of reporters. But, you know, this kind of crackdown on social media, internet, and, and, and also reporters just because they are exercising their, you know, uh, uh, right to, to, they're doing their jobs, mm. uh, they're be, they've been targeted. Uh, just yesterday, they arrested more reporters, young reporters, uh, that the government is accusing them of uh, sharing information that might uh, might be, uh, you know, uh, critical of the government. But also, you know, uh, reporters who are writing critical articles about the government and the way how the government is handling the civil unrest has been, um, you know, a, a very sensitive uh, topic for the government, and that the, they haven't been uh, good at handling it uh, because it really, really uh, makes it makes things worse. Uh, the more they crack down on uh, freedom uh, of, of information, and the, the more they crack down on, on, um, you know, journalists, uh, the more these issues are highlighted, and, and more people are angered. Uh, Salem, I'd love to let you go, but I really do have to ask this question. I'm sure you're hearing messages from back home about what's going on. Uh, what's the real concern here? Do people want a change of government or they just want a change of how things are being done? The opposition parties uh, in the country have been calling for you know, representation, autonomy. They want to be part of the political, political process. They want to be part of, you know, the development process. But as of now, uh, you know, things are not really inclusive. And so that's what they're calling for. They also want, uh, you know, because of the past year's crackdown and the way the government has handled the protests, they are looking for independent bodies to come in and investigate uh, the killings and uh, they want uh, people who are responsible to, uh, to be held to account. Mm -hmm. And so more of a dialogue, more of a representation, uh, more of, you know, being beneficiaries of their, their own lands. And that's what m most of the, the, the country is calling for. Salem, appreciates your joining us in Network Africa. You've done a lot to open our, help our understand of what's going on in Ethiopia today. Thank you for having me.
And we're not done talking to world politics on the continent. There seems to be a crisis brewing in Zambia, where main opposition leader Hakinda Hichilema spent the night in jail and is said to be awaiting being charged with sedition by a court. Mr. Hichilema has said that President Edgar Lungu's victory in August's presidential election was fraudulent, but failed in his legal bid to have the result overturned. He took to Facebook today to talk about his experience in jail and said, despite everything, he's in high spirits. Ivory Coast President Alassane Ouattara has requested that lawmakers approve a new constitution allowing presidential candidates not born in Cote d'Ivoire, but whose parents are Ivorian, to run for election. He says if the new constitution is approved, it will end years of turmoil and war, but the opposition says it will be a backward step for democracy. Remember, it was the same issue that uh, Alassane Ouattara faced in his election with uh, former president Laurent Babu. Ivory Coast President Alassane Ouattara called on lawmakers to turn the page on years of political turmoil and civil war by approving a new draft constitution that the opposition criticized as a step backwards for democracy. Ouattara assured during his campaign for re-election last year to change the language in the constitution which states the parents of presidential candidates must both be natural born Ivorians. Ivorian nationality was at the heart of a crisis that began with a 1999 coup and included a 2002 to 2003 civil war that split the West African nation in two for eight years. The draft charter submitted to Parliament by Ouattara softens the argumentative clause which had been used by his opponents to bar him from elections and was a symbol of exclusion, particularly of northerners. Watanga finally won election in 2010, although his victory sparked a second brief war that killed more than 3,000 people after incumbent President Laurent Gbagbo refused to accept defeat. When we return on Network Africa, young Ethan Suglo gets a chance to live a normal life in Ghana. Please join us again for the story.